Education has been an important key to the world of possibilities of human. Education itself has guided us from the caveman era where we had let our child running in the middle of field and having a risk of dying due to anything. And until now, where we can go to school safely, but also get the world of possibilities, creativity, and imagination. But well, innovation is the most important thing. Good morning, everyone. I am Felix from IP7A, and today I'm going to be talking about innovation in education and how it has actually shapes the world. So before we begin, let's take a look at the chapters. And there's something that I wanted to make sure, which is that most of my documents are from Britannica, National Geographic, and some are from my social study teachers. And I would like to be thankful for Mr. Gallagher, who's been teaching me all of those useful informations. So we'll begin from the 5th to 16th century, where, was we, where we will see how we have studied in the medieval times and much, much older. Then we will see from the 17th to the 18th century, where education has started to have some signs of changing. Then to the 19th century, where we have seen great points of history where education has started to shift around us. And then we start off the first half of the 20th century, after the cruel World War I, we start to see how technical education will rise up. And after the cruel World War II, or in the second half of the 20th century, you will see the rise of modern schools, but also an important event that changed our world. And lastly, we will see the 21st century, or the present day that we see today, with the most advanced education that we had ever seen. So now, let's begin with from the 5th to the 16th century. From the 5th to the 16th century, we had only one subject, religion. One of the most common ones are Christianity and Buddhism. For example, in Christianity, all we have to do is just to get a Bible and then read page by page and remember every single word in it. And for, the, for Buddhism, we will study through monks as it can be useful and much easier to understand. And then when we move to the 10th to the 16th century, education, if you want the best, is only for the rich and the royal. But in some countries, they allow village schools. This was important because it made education more widespread, but also it helped to increase the basic knowledge of the residents in that country. Then we moved from the 17th to the 18th century, where we saw new subjects. We got arithmetics, geometry, literacy, but also music and a renewed religion, where the government started to change the Bible to their favorable subjects. Then, education for the blind. Every single blind language was used into schools and institutes were built. This proved important because it showed how countries actually cared for their population, but also the younger generations. Then. Happiness was also one of their goals to spread around. And all of this are created from the Enlightenment, where it shifted around North America, but also Europe. And here's the conference room of the Enlightenment, where it was first used for countries in Europe. Then we see in the 19th century, where things are shifting around largely, but also Thanks to the Industrial Revolution, we also have a lot of others. We got kindergarten. Kindergarten is developed by a German teacher who thinks that children should be nurtured and study through entertainment and play at a young age. Well, so he created the Kindergarten Institute. Kindergarten is a combination of two German words. Kinder means child and Garten means garden. When combined together, it will become cha children's garden. Then, we also see the progressive movement in North America. 
The progressive movement is by the government to allow poor laborer and factory workers to get more salary, but also a lot of the progressive education, giving the laborers and factory workers children to go to school by building good their schools, town, and especially big schools in the suburbs, the rural areas. Then, women's education was also added. This proved important because when women's education was added, it has showed how women's civil rights was, was first acted, and then it has shown how we men had care for women, and also, but also respect them. Then we move to the first half of the 20th century, after World War I. After World War I, technical education has rose up because the governments have finally seen how technology, engineers, but also young generations are important to the country. So they decide to add technology into daily class. It's also similar to robotics class today as it will let us see technology and interact with them at a very early age. Then we also have the new education movements in Europe. It's all about to attend the child's basic needs of intellectual, physical, and emotional needs in education. But they also say that the teachers should not punish students physically or emotionally because they think that children should be nurtured and they should not pose any negative or harsh regimes on children first century or the present day. This is where we had adaptability and flexibility, which have helped us through the first two decades. Field trips were added for better experience. Robotics and coding class, early technology interactions, science labs, we had to see how chemicals react. But also, the interactions between students and, te students and teachers were most important because it's proved crucial since it allows students to have better creativity and imagination, but also feel that they are being cared and noticed. But from 2020, from 2022, COVID-19 came in, but we kept on going and studying. Kahoot and Zoom, they both helped us to study online with fun, but also, but also get to see together without getting interactive in real life without going offline. We also see VR to let the students immerse into a world of imagination and creativity. Look it also helped us to play in the classrooms with their fun games. And lastly, in the early 2023, we saw ChatGPT was applied into education. It helped students to learn more efficiently but also gets to more source of information much quicker. But along with the changes, we also have problems. For example, classes order, playing games during homework, phones during class, cyberbullying. Appearing of new technologies, but also means that there are also new challenges. Students also ha always have to face with class disorder because sometimes the rules are not enough. Cyberbullying through phone because this is a modern age of technology. People can actually bully anyone from a phone simply. Playing games during homework, new games, more bigger distraction. And using phone during class, distraction for the whole class, worsening grades. But most of all, in the early 2023, we had also seen this. A college student had tried to use ChatGPT to write his essay as a homework. This is the suspiciously well-structured and wording. He got caught and got plagiarism. But it also marked a new challenge for the teachers because they will be having a hard time to detecting where you students are using the essays from ChatGPT or themselves. My English language arts teacher found a lot of her near perfect essays. He had ran through multiple AI to check whether they are AIs or not. And he caught only one of them. 
That means that there's still a, it can be a lot of AI generated. So it will be proved very hard for the teachers to do that. But there are also common solutions out there. But not all of them are efficient on students. Punishments, very common in uh, every single country. Hitting us, putting ourselves up a wall, writing. It may, it may have a temporary effect, but it will cause fear, anxiety, depression on students. It's all possible. Rules, <laughs> making clear rules can be efficient. Most students can obey, most. And that means that not all of them will. And phone confiscation before class proved to be very, very efficient in, in, the, in, the, in the last three years, as phone can be distracting. So collecting phone has been uh, had proved to be efficient, but also helping the class increase. Because less distraction, better focus on education. But in conclusion, Education itself had changed our world. It led us through time, but also innovation is a creativity and imagination. It just helps to change and build a better system in education. But all of it is just to make us feel proud of the past, grateful for the present, but also confident in the future. Thank you for listening.